What is up, better humans? Melius humano. Latin for better humans. Better human. We're going to talk today about goals. Okay, this is a truth series. Everything you want is rooted in universal, unchanging, unwavering, absolute truths embedded into the fabric of reality. Get the Better Human newsletter over at betterhumans.substack.com. All right, so goals. There's just so many sections to this, so, so many sub-lessons. And so I'm going to be spending a lot of time on this to try to get out as much of it as I can. And I'm sure more will even come up later on that I'll have to add. Uh, so I've already done the first video the other day I did on definitiveness or definiteness of purpose and going, not quitting. And now we're going to talk today about really the first step actually is you, you have to really see it exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Cause as Seneca said, if you don't know to which port you're sailing, no wind is favorable. If you don't know where you're going, then whatever propels you somewhere in some direction, you don't know if it's actually getting you to where you want to go or it's moving you away from where you want to go because you don't know where you want to go. You think you know where you want to go. You might have some arbitrary goal. It's not really a goal. I call it an anti-goal because it makes you feel like it's a goal, but it's not. When you say, I want to be rich, I want to be financially free. Well, what the hell does that mean? Okay. Because some people want a hundred million to them. That's rich. Some people would be fine with like a million dollars and some passive income so that they could travel the world and live frugally. Right. Some people, like want yachts and crazy shit like that. And some people just want the freedom to not have to work for somebody and to do work that matters to them. Like me, for example, I consider myself wealthy and successful, well beyond many people that have much more money than me, but aren't living with pure freedom, right? So freedom, freedom of mind, freedom of body, freedom of what I do, freedom of where I go, freedom of who I associate with, freedom of what I work on. These are the things that to me are success, right? And I still have these goals and I'm, I'm still working towards things, right? So it's not like it's about making it. In fact, success is really about pursuing a worthy goal or ideal and then working towards that and deriving the meaning and the purpose in your life from doing so. And so in that way, like I've already made it. Thing is you can make it too. And it doesn't have to be about the end result. They say it's about the journey, not the destination. It's just, I mean, I, there's not truer words to have ever been spoken. So, how do you get there though? Like, how do you figure out what that is? Well, that requires a lot of effort, a lot of soul searching. But the first thing that you can do is start somewhere and you might change this goal. That's fine. You might change the goal. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to decide on something. You need concrete, definite, absolute clarity on the thing that you're going after. But again, you can change it, right? If needed, if feedback comes in or if you decide that's not really the thing you want anymore, whatever. I mean, most people change goals when they're really, really setting, achieving those goals because they just create new goals because they're like, oh, well, I got this goal. Am I supposed to just like shrivel up and die now? Obviously not. I need something to live for. I need purpose. And this is where you fall into that more trap where people think that money's a goal or fame's a goal or power's a goal. And then they get it and they're like, okay, well, this isn't really like the end all be all. I thought it was going to be, this doesn't really satisfy my ever inner desire and need and want. It's not really doing it for me. So I'm just going to go after more. It must be more. If I'm a hundred millionaire, well, I think I'll make it when I'm a billionaire. If I'm on the, you know, the billionaire list, but I'm at the end, well, I need to move up. I need to be like 25th. I need to get up there. And then when you get up there, you're like, well, I, you know what? I need to be Elon. I need to beat Je Jeff Bezos. <laughs> it's it. It's mistaking what they're actually going after, which for most people, what they're really going after is some form of, some form of autonomy, some form of meaning and purpose. And the problem is when you make your meaning and purpose only making money or hitting some arbitrary number like that, like money itself, if you think about it, money itself doesn't do anything. Okay. It's what happens as a result of using that money. Like those are the things that happen. Those are the effects that you have. Money is just, it's just like built up energy that you can use. In fact, that's what it is. It's financial energy that you can use towards some end, right? But it's in a, a solid state. It's in a state that you're, that you need to basically burn off to create some effect. Right. So think of it as like any physical object that holds energy as Einstein showed us that all everything is energy matters. Energy is just stored energy. Everything is energy, right? Energy and mass are interchangeable. Money is the same way. Money is a form of stored energy that you acquired by doing something energy wise. And then it came in the form of money. And then when you use that money, you can use that to unleash energy into some end, right? Whether it's to buy a, a yacht that required a ton of energy to go into to build, or maybe it's to buy a service where somebody expends their energy for you or on something, 
right? Or to get on a plane where energy is literally burned off so that you can fly to another destination. It's actually a very fascinating concept. Like that idea right there, uh, how everything is energy. And when you start thinking about that, it's, it's fascinating. It, it requires its own lesson pretty much. So I think we've established that if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? Right? I think Yogi Bear said something to that effect. By the way, Yogi Bear has got some of the best quotes in the history of mankind. <laughs> like that dude was just really, really smart. Right? You have to define your goals. Okay. You have to define your goals. If you don't define your goals, you will not reach goals. Like I'm trying to hammer this home and, and let me tell you real quick. Okay. I've been guilty of this because my thing is I like having lots of interests. I like building lots of different things. I am more prone to being more of a generalist rather than a specialist. Like I would rather be really good at a lot of things and maybe not world-class rather than being world-class in one thing. That's just my proclivity. That's just who I am. And you know, it is what it is, but every single major thing that I've ever accomplished has come from intense focus on one thing, right? Because if you are a generalist in that energy into the multiple things, you, you put like a small percentage of energy into all of that, it takes a long time, like writing, copywriting, marketing, like all these different things that I've been spread out doing in business and life and whatever. Like I've gotten good at them over the years, but if I were to focus on any one of those, I could have maybe got to world-class status in, in one of them or two of them, right? Or like one at a time, you know? So it's like this idea of energy, focus, where you direct it, et cetera, it's, it's a big thing, right? Now, as it, re as it relates to goals, you should think of it similarly. If you have multiple goals, and I have multiple goals, but like I'm really focusing on a few core goals, like my business and a couple things that can really take me to accomplishing the other goals, or at least, you know, take me towards those financial goals I have. And then I can spend energy because I have time that, that, that success brings me because success brings money. It brings opportunity. It brings the ability to not have to work as much like you get to buy your time back. And then with that time I can invest in other things, maybe passion pursuits, maybe writing the book, maybe speaking, etc. Right. But I still have a singular goal for the money making goals that I have in my life, which really is the foundation. Because like I said, it's about buying that freedom. And then with that freedom, I can do other things. Okay. So that's my strategy. Some people want to become a billionaire and they're like, that's their thing. And so they kind of do one, company or one product or whatever, and they try to make it a billion dollar thing. That's not really my thing. Maybe in the future it will be, but right now I have more of a lifestyle business and I have more of a kind of a lifestyle idea in mind where I'm not really willing to trade the next, you know, 10 years of my life working 80 hours a, a week and, and not, you know, being there for my kids. Um, I would much rather go at a slightly slower pace, uh, maybe just a little less intense pace and a more profit driven sustainable, like grow big by growing small pace, right? And so that's what I'm focusing on with Wild Foods. Okay, so without going too far off tangent into more rabbit holes, we've, we've identified that the most important thing you have to do is you have to clearly define a goal, okay? What does that mean? How much money do you wanna have down to the exact number? What, like how long till you achieve that goal? You know, and if you have nothing and you're just starting, you probably wanna give yourself 10 years. Okay, that's a good starting point. If you have a business and you're already making money and you're like kind of on a growth path, then maybe it can be five. You, you figure out the buy when. That's very important because the buy when determines the path to getting there, right? You could potentially make a million dollars in a year, but it might require so much change and so much aggressiveness. Like, you, you know, you might have to get out there doing sales call, like a hundred sales calls a day, just like complete maniac mode. And that might not fit into your current uh, personality and lifestyle. Right? Like you might have to be solving some health things and you might have family, you might have other responsibilities, maybe you have a day job. So maybe that's not practical. Okay. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out the timeline first that so that you can reverse engineer that back down to the daily habits you do and connect to that. Now I did the first video on this in this series, the truth series on goal setting, how to set and achieve goals. So I go into that more in depth and I'm not going to spend a lot of time here on that. Like goal setting itself is a process. Uh, and then with, within each of these steps, whether it's mapping out the buy when, you know, mapping out the method for achieving those goals, like how are you going to make a million dollars? There's different modalities to do that. There's different ways to do that. And some might be more naturally uh, proclivitous for you. And some might be really, really outside of your realm and you don't want to do that, whatever. Okay. So watch that video and or podcast to learn more about like the specific goal setting process. This one is just about the really big idea that applies to everything you want to accomplish in life, right? But it specifically applies to goals. And that is 
clarity, absolute clarity of what you're trying to do. Absolute clarity, specifically down to the number, down to how many, uh, again, other video for this, but how many years, how many, like what are you gonna do on a daily basis? What are the milestones in your business or effort that's gonna get you there? Every single possible thing, step by step, and, and, and exact clarity on each of those, right? Now, when you establish this clarity and how you're gonna get there, you will adjust to feedback you're given. Like you will adjust to reality. And so things might change here and there. In fact, they will change because you're not gonna predict the future. You're not gonna know exactly how you're gonna get there, right? But when you have that clear picture, what that does is you connect your your clarity, that, that definitiveness of purpose, right? Being definite in what you're doing. And then you connect that to desire, motivation, and daily action, right? And then you just start doing things and building things. You start putting out that energy into the universe. And then over time, things come back and you respond to it and you act. As long as action is constant, as long as desire is constant, and as long as clarity of where you're going is constant, you will get there or somewhere better or somewhere similar. That's the beauty of having clear goals is that you might accomplish something better or bigger, right? That you didn't even realize. And then you re redefine your clarity and you probably set new goals, right? That's the beautiful thing about creation. That's the beautiful thing about goal setting in the future and just how amazing like the, the process is. And then what you do with all these things, with the clarity, with the definiteness, with the purpose, with the motivation, with the organized thought, all these things that you put together that are a byproduct of this clarity, right? You do that on a daily basis. That becomes who you are. And then you start to enjoy the process of the journey. You enjoy the work. Work is no longer something that you are afraid of. Work is no longer something you even think about as work. You're kind of like itching to get out of the house every day like I am. Itching every day to get into my zone here in my office where I can just focus and get shit done. And I can turn my phone off and nobody can disturb me and I can get into that flow state. Like I'm pursuing my purpose, my mission. I'm doing things that matter. Like, and sometimes I'm doing things I don't want to do, like signing tax forms and filing stupid reports and crap like that for like the city or the um, Austin comptroller's office and like or Texas. Like just all the shit you have to do, like taxes, like whatever, right? But what happens is when you know that each one of these things is connected to that that larger goal, and and, and you have clarity on that, and you are committed, and you're going. Those other things, even when they're inconvenient and annoying you actually have motivation to get them done. You, you wanna get done like right away, and so you go after it, you get it done because you know it's part of the process. And so there is a place where you can kind of separate even the most annoying things you don't wanna do from like your desire or not desire to do them because you're so focused on that end goal and that clarity. So yes, clarity is the most important thing. Now I got a quote here. We're gonna kind of try to expand this. It's from the book, uh, what is the book called? The book is Out of This World, I believe. And there's a few quotes in there. I think you can find the book for free on YouTube. The Master Key Society, I think, has one. But this is a quote from the Kindle version that I got because I wanted to highlight some stuff. Okay? So let's read this. The first step in change in the future is desire. Define your objective. Okay. So desire for a very specific objective. The more clear clarity that you have on what that goal is, the more desire can latch onto it and connect, you know, the energy of desire, the actions connected to desire, and connect all those things to that specific objective, that specific goal. That's why it's so important. Because when you have something that's vague and it's like, I want to be famous or I want to be rich, how do you connect desire to that? Like you there's you cannot connect that to like a daily process. You cannot connect that to like who you should talk to, what opportunities you should should say yes to, what opportunities should you ignore right? So on and so forth. That's why clarity is so important. And it pretty much underpins the basis of everything else. Secondly, construct an event, which you will believe you would encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. So this is where we're getting into some of the visualization stuff. And this is a really good exercise. I mean, it's just one of those things that might feel kind of kooky at first, but I'm telling you just freaking do it. And it's something that I need to get better at because I've always had kind of fuzzy goals in my mind and it's taken me a long time and I've made massive progress, but it seems like along the way, Every time I get more clear on my goals, I, I get them I get to them faster, right? And I and I make more progress and I make more money, etc. Construct an event. So like imagine yourself winning that award and you're staying on the podium. Imagine like Jim Carrey did. He wrote a check to himself for $10 million and he showed it on the Oprah show, 
I think it was Oprah. And then he basically cashed that check later after he got signed for i think dumb and dumber is what it was i think the dumb and dumber check was literally 10 million dollars <laughs> like it's some that's some crazy shit actually when you think about that and it's like that's the type of stuff that you need to do right visualize cashing that check maybe even write a check down keep it in your pocket he used to carry it around in, in his wallet right write your goals down put them on a screensaver create calendar reminders where they pop up every single day and you have to check off and like reread that goal and like re like expand upon what you're trying to accomplish like remind yourself okay so when you accomplish that goal, you're trying to visualize something where you really get into the visualization of having achieved that goal, where you start to feel it, where like close your eyes and you can, you can smell what's around you. You can, um, you can see people that are there. You can like clearly see their face. You can visualize yourself taking action, saying thank you, hugging people, whatever that, I mean, this is powerful stuff. Okay. Seriously powerful stuff. And the thing is, is like you, you can do this once and it'll probably feel cool. It'll be almost a form of like a meditation, mindfulness type of thing. But when you start doing it often, that's where the real power kicks in. That's when the energy that seeps out of your brain starts going into the external environment. And as we know, everything is energy. Energy is always flowing, right? Humans can't even see like maybe 10% of the light spectrum. Like there's energy all around us. Microwaves, radiation, light waves. Like we don't even see the shit. Show me a sound wave, right? Yet there's literal sound waves going into your ears right now that you can't see. Energy's like that. Energy is flowing all around us all the time. Everything is energy. Thirdly, immobilize the physical body and induce a condition akin to sleep. Lie on a bed or relax on a chair and imagine that you were sleepy. Then, with eyelids closed and your attention focused on the action you intend to experience in imagination, mentally feel yourself right into the proposed action. Imagining all the while that you are actually performing the action here or now. So this is a this is a form where you kind of like lay down, you you try to like really relax, and then you visualize. This is another. I mean, this is just going to be good for stress, anyways. This is something you should probably be doing. People need to be, you know, uh, just disconnecting, laying down, you know, like meditating, de-stressing, right? So just do this, anyways. You must always participate in the imaginary action, right? So you want to direct it. You want to clearly visualize and expend energy into doing that, not merely stand back and look on but you must feel that you are actually performing the action so that the imaginary sensation is real to you, right? You really wanna place yourself in that future state, having accomplished that goal, and then feel good about it. Like, I've been doing this recently with having, let's say, $10 million in my bank account, where I imagine what I would do. I would wake up, do my morning routine, check my phone. Maybe I check the market. Maybe I check Bitcoin's price, something like that. And then I know that my Wells Fargo account, if I wanted to check it or whatever, I don't actually bank with Wells anymore, but I used to. I would log into my account and I could see $10 million just right there. You know, maybe it's like, in fact, a better, more specific visual visualization of that would be, it would be $10,050,547.22, right? And I can, I can see that in my mind's eye right now. I can visualize that. I know what it looks like when I open the app. I know what it looks like when I check my balance. I know what it reads on a screen, right? And instead of it being like, a thousand dollars and fifty dollars, you know, one one thousand fifty and seven cents or whatever. Instead of being a smaller number, there's like a bunch more zeros behind it, right? And just imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine whatever's in your bank account right now. Visualize like four zeros behind it, and how life changing that would potentially be. You would wake up, and all the things you used to be afraid of that relating to money, bills, whatever, would just poof be gone, right? It's a powerful thing. And so that this is an example of how to do that. You can visualize the money aspect of it, which I think you should. But you also need to visualize specifically the tangible thing, like you built that company and you're congratulating your team. Maybe you're doing a toast and you're doing a speech and you're visualizing, you know, the faces looking up to you. Uh, you, you visualize how you will feel about just the, pr the pride of what you've accomplished, what people around you accomplished, the camaraderie of your team, you know, the product and, the or, and or service that you put out there that makes people's lives better. Like whatever it is, you visualize that, visualize that, visualize that. And then you can visualize after that, you open your account and the check from, the company that's buying you maybe had a big exit. You you visualize that check being deposited or that wire being deposited in your account. Now I've received a big wire before for a past transaction in my account. It's a very surreal experience. You open it up and you're like, you see, you know, low number, low number, low number, and then boop, huge number with lots of zeros. Like, it's crazy, and yeah, so powerful.
right? So you got to figure out what these things are for you. And I would highly recommend writing them down, starting as a reference, thinking about them, iterating them, evolving them. Sometimes, maybe the number would be too big and it doesn't seem practical, right? Bring that number down a little bit, right? Maybe you don't have a business you're even thinking about uh, that, that'll get you there, but start brainstorming options, startup, sales, like product, course, like just, just start doing it. Maybe getting a job at the next hot startup and you getting stock options, whatever it is, okay? Finally, a few more points here. It is important always to remember that the proposed action must be one which follows the fulfillment of your desire. So what he's saying is here is you want to visualize the thing that would happen after you accomplish the thing you're trying to accomplish. That's very important. That's why, like I said, when you're visualizing something like $10 million in your bank account, you need to connect it to something that could happen to get you there. So maybe it's that exit where somebody buys your company. Maybe, um, maybe like the past year, you could visualize all the sales coming to your account because you've been like selling high ticket and you have like $10,000 deposits like here, there, there, whatever, something like that. But it needs to be something that is connected to fulfilling that accomplishment of, of accomplishing that. And then also, you must feel yourself into the action until it has all the vividness and distinctness of reality. So you really want to feel it and visualize it and get deep into that state. And then finally, experience has taught me to restrict the imaginary action, to condense the idea which is to be the object of our meditation into a single act and to reenact it over and over again until it is the feeling of reality. So what he's saying here is you want to be very specific, very, very, very specific, like one thing. One action that leads to one outcome and then just feel each of those deep in your psyche. Visualize those hard. Otherwise, the attention will wander off along an associa associational track and hosts of associated images will be presented to our attention. So again, he's just saying like the importance of not diver uh, diverging too much off course and having one specific thing. It's really hard to control human monkey mind. We tend to always be thinking about things and why this and that, whatever. So like <laughs> it's really important to... Uh, stick to one thing, right? When you stick to one thing, you will have opportunities for other things. You will have opportunities for other goals, okay? But you should always be constantly re-diverging and focusing that attention to this one thing and let the other things, you know, either sort themselves out or, you know, like if it's important, it'll grow and then you can kind of spend some more attention on it. Just make sure you keep directing your energy into the one thing. And as this lesson pertains to, it's regarded, regarding what is that specific goal and what is that specific outcome of that goal that you can visualize yourself doing? Like I said, having a speech, getting an award, checking your bank account when you wake up in the morning and waking up without all the stress that you have right now related to money, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, that's going to be it for today's lesson. Get the Better Human newsletter over at betterhumans.substack.com and also subscribe on the podcast, your Better Human podcast and or YouTube or both. And I'll see you next one. But make sure that you're visualizing it specifically. You got to see it before you can achieve it.